Welcome to the case studies for the EFMC best practices for the hit to lead phase in drug discovery programs. My name is Marina Wilwacher and I am going to describe our hit to lead campaign for a small molecule inhibitor of the enzyme 17 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 13, in short HSD 17 B13. The target enzyme is a lipid droplet associated member of the 17 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase family and is primarily expressed in hepatocytes. Genome wide association studies revealed HSD 17 B13 as a potential new target for the treatment of non alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, and other liver diseases. Through analysis and comparison of single nucleotide polymorphisms between patients and healthy volunteers, it was shown that loss of function mutations of HSD 17 B13 provide a reduced risk for NASH. The enzyme oxidizes a variety of lipid substrates using NAD plus as cofactor, exemplified here for estradiol. However, the disease relevant substrate and the physiological function of HSD 17 B13 in the context of NASH are still unclear. In order to study the physiological function of HSD 17 B13, a high quality chemical probe was needed. The phylogenetically closest homologue to HSD 17 B13 is HSD 17 B11, so a high selectivity for B13 over B11 was considered a prerequisite in the search of HSD 17 B13 inhibitors. For the discovery of small molecule inhibitors, we screened 1.1 million compounds from the Böhringer Ingelheim pool against the enzymatic activity of human HSD 17B13 in the presence of estradiol and NAD on our MALDI MS platform. Out of the initial 17,000 hits, 8,000 compounds in approximately 1,900 clusters were confirmed in those response determinations. After removal of pains and frequent hitters, we reclustered the hits and performed extensive analoging. We further investigated the cellular activity on target binding using a Fermat shift assay and selectivity against recombinant human HSD 17 B11. Through this hit triaging, we identified primarily phenols and carboxylic acids along with a few other clusters. After resynthesis and potency confirmation of key cluster representatives, their in vitro DMPK, FISCHEM, and safety properties were investigated and a preliminary IP assessment was performed. This led us to two prioritized clusters with orthogonal profiles, a phenol cluster with 25 compounds and a carboxylic acid cluster with roughly 260 compounds. Given the cross-reactivity on mouse HSD17B13, we chose to further evaluate the alkynal phenol screening hit depicted in the lower left box. In order to identify potential liabilities of the screening hit, we thoroughly profiled the compound in several in vitro assays. It revealed a moderate activity in the enzymatic human and mouse HSD 17B13 assay, as well as in the cellular human HSD 17B13 assay, while possessing good selectivity versus B11. In addition, the compound showed a good balance between solubility and lipophilicity, a high permeability, and no inhibition of cytochrome P450 enzymes but a mechanism-based inhibition of CYP3A4. While high metabolic stability was observed in liver microsomes, low metabolic stability in hepatocytes pointed toward a significant contribution of phase II metabolism. Metabolite identification confirmed a strong phase II metabolism, leading to 70% glucuronidation and 30% sulfation of the parent phenol after incubation with human hepatocytes. Furthermore, safety profiling revealed the formation of GSH adducts after metabolic activation with human liver microsomes. From these results, we derived the main optimization parameters to be potency, metabolic stability in hepatocytes, and reactive metabolite formation. Let's first have a closer look at reactive metabolite formation, which can lead to drug-induced toxicity. Our screening hit comprises two structural alerts, a phenol and an alkyl moiety, both of which can be converted to reactive metabolites. Sequential oxidations of the phenol form an orthoquinone, a strong electrophile prone to undergo nucleophilic attack, for example, by glutathione. 
Similarly, an alkyne can be oxidized to the respective oxyrene, which can also rearrange to a ketene, and both can again be attacked by nucleophiles such as glutathione. Thus, GSH adduct formation is predictive of a compound's covalent binding potential. So in order to reduce reactive metabolite formation and phase II metabolism, we started our HIT optimization by replacing the phenol moiety with a variety of suitable bioisosters. Unfortunately, neither of the listed analogs showed any activity in the enzymatic human HSD17 B13 assay. In parallel, we aimed at identifying the minimal pharmacophore and at improving the ligand efficiency and the ligand lipophilicity efficiency of our screening hit. Chopping off the annulated imidazole of dixanthin in the northern part of the molecule led to only a minor drop in potency, increasing both the LE and the LIPI. Further reducing molecular weight by replacing the methyl uracil with uracil or methyl acetamide did not improve LE and LIPI. With the methyl uracil northern part in hand, we refocused our optimization efforts on metabolic stability. First, we investigated the replacement of the alkyne moiety and were pleased to find five-membered heterocycles such as thiazole 13 and thiazol-14 to significantly boost human HSD17 B13 activity in the enzymatic as well as in the cellular assays. Compared to most five-membered heterocycles, the corresponding six-membered heterocycles, exemplified by compound 22, were less active. Having removed one potential metabolic hotspot, we resumed our structure activity relationship activities around the saffron phenol moiety to mitigate phase II metabolism. With its well-balanced profile, the thiazol-14 served as the basis for systematic exploration of additional substituents on the phenol. While electron withdrawing halogens in either the 2 or 6 position boost the potency, Larger or more polar electron withdrawing groups, as well as electron donating groups, reduce potency. Increasing the acidity of the phenol OH was found beneficial for potency, and the 2,6-difluorophenol with a pKa value of approximately 7 was identified as optimal substitution pattern. The low metabolic stability in human hepatocytes could be slightly improved, but remained dissatisfying. Next, we investigated the northern part in combination with the best five-membered heterocycles and the optimized saffron 2,6-difluorophenol. All synthesized compounds achieved a potency range in the enzymatic human and mouse HSD17 B13 assays, where the IC50 values were in a similar range as the enzyme concentration, thereby hitting the assay wall. Further compound optimization was therefore guided by the respective Ki values for tight binding inhibition using Morrison's equation. Finally, the ethyl uracil BI3231 was selected for further in vitro and in vivo profiling. On the next slide, the in vitro profile of BI3231 is summarized. In all pharmacological assays, the potency against HSD17 B13 was significantly increased, while high selectivity versus B11 was maintained. With the thousand-fold increase in potency, a dramatic increase in LIPI was achieved, and through replacement of the initial alkyne, MBI and GSH adduct formation could be reduced. Overall, BI3231 shows a good in vitro pharmacological, physicochemical, safety and DMPK profile, but the stability in human and mouse hepatocytes remains moderate. We tested BI3231 also for its binding properties on recombinant human HSD17 B13 via thermal shift assay experiments depicted in the left-hand graph. In the presence of NAD+, the melting temperature of HSD17 B13 treated with 5 micromolar BI3231, shown in dark red, was significantly higher than the DMSO control in dark green confirming specific on-target binding to human HSD17 B13. Surprisingly, no thermal stabilization of HSD17 B13 could be observed with NAD plus alone. The stabilizing effect of BI3231 is highly dependent on the presence of NAD plus 
indicating that the ligand binding pocket might only be formed after NAD plus has bound, suggesting an ordered by by mechanism. To further investigate the NAD plus dependency of the phenol lead glass, we performed cross titrations of test compounds and NAD plus in varying concentrations in the human HSD17 B13 enzyme assay while keeping the estradiol constant at the highest practically feasible concentration. In these experiments, we observed a significant NAD plus dependent decrease of the IC50 values for the phenols and compound BI3231, illustrating an uncompetitive mode of inhibition, shown in graphs A and B. We also subjected BI3231 to mouse PK studies, as well as tissue distribution and excretion studies to further elucidate the fate of the compound in vivo. The plasma PK after intravenous and per oral administration in mice, depicted in red and blue respectively, was characterized by a biphasic and rapid plasma clearance that exceeded the hepatic blood flow, and also by low oral bioavailability. Systemic bioavailability could be significantly improved through subcutaneous administration, avoiding first-pass effects after oral absorption. Functional investigation of tissue exposure after IV application revealed a strong accumulation of BI3231 in liver compared to plasma and other tissue. Since it is unclear to which extent the hepatic enrichment of the compound beneficially contributes to the inhibition of HSD17B13, a target expressed in the liver, Reliable methods to assess direct in vivo target engagement need to be established. We conclude that substantial multiples of in vitro pharmacologically active concentrations could be achieved and maintained systemically in mice with twice daily subcutaneous dosing, potentially enabling further in vivo characterization and the study of pharmacodynamic effects of BI3231. In summary, the alkynal phenol HTS hit was successfully optimized towards the lead compound BI3231, selectively inhibiting HSD17B13 with low nanomolar potency, comprising improved FISCAM, DMPK, and safety properties. Further details can be found in our J MedChem publication, Discovery of a Novel Potent and Selective HSD17B13 Inhibitor, BI3231, a well-characterized chemical probe available for open science, which is free for download. And the compound can be ordered for free from openme.com. I would like to thank everybody who was involved in this program and you for listening. Goodbye.